size up the linebackers then and get uh, right to Sammy Brown because even though he's stepping on the field for the first time, maybe he's going to contribute right out of the gate. Yeah, I fully expect him to. Not saying he's going to come out start day one or anything like that. You know, you got Barrett Carter back there at, at the weak side, and um, Wade Woodas is there at Mike, and those those two guys have plenty of experience, a lot of reps. They've been there in, in that system for a while. But listening to those two guys talk about Sammy Brown, they just talk up his football IQ and how quickly he's soaking everything up, and, and he's he's putting in so much more work than what's asked of him. He stays late, gets there early. It sounds like, you know, he's doing a lot more than what's required. And that, that's the kind of things you want to hear about freshmen, especially freshmen you're probably going to depend on this year. Um, he's been working at Mike, and um, it, it just – it sounds like he's going to be a contributor, man. I, I don't I don't think he's going to be starting day one. Wouldn't shock me if he was starting by um, – you know, the halfway point or something like that, because I think he's that talented. I think he's that kind of – he's he's a guy that can have that kind of impact. Um, but but when you put him with Barrett and Wood as – and, you know, hearing good things about Kobe McLeod too, um, who's been there now for a couple of years. So, so you, you put him with those guys, and, and it gives you a good, solid foundation there. You, you'll be able to rotate in some guys and keep guys fresh, sounds like. So Jeremiah Trotter off to the NFL. Is Barrett Carter the leader of this group? Absolutely. I actually asked him about that, you know, the other night about being the old man in that room. And he he, he said it just doesn't, it doesn't really feel that way, but he knows it is. And he's one of those vocal guys, man. He's very personable. Um, I, I could see him being a, one of the leaders on the defense, period, not just of the group. Um, I, I, he's just got that kind of personality and that, that – would lead you to believe kids kind of, or players kind of gravitate towards him, man. He, he's just that kind of guy. Does Jamal Anderson have a shot to do anything? You know, we'll see. Um, I would expect him to be at the rotation at some point. I didn't get to – I don't remember seeing him that first day I was there. Um, did see D. Creighton, and he looks like a guy that's put in some work um, in, in the weight room over the past year. He just looks a little different. Um I could see him being in the rotation a little bit. We'll, we'll see about Anderson. Um, I haven't seen enough yet to make a, a determination on that. <laughs> talking up Clemson football. We're talking defense. We're going to the secondary with Jason Priester, all Clemson Tigers.com right here at the Voice of College Football. Please hit the like button. Follow Jason. Of course, you're going to see all his uh, destinations there on the banner here, but it's all Clemson Tigers.com. Avian Terrell, Jaden Lucas, are they the corners for sure, or what's the competition going to look like there? Um, I'm say I think you're probably looking at Avian Terrell and Shelton Lewis, you know, as the starters going into the season there at corner. To me, Jaden Lucas is kind of the wild card. He's a guy that's been hurt a lot his first two seasons. He's not even he's still recuperating from a surgery. He's not taking part in spring right now. So if you can get him healthy, though. Yeah, he's gonna be. He, he's he's that kind of talent. He's gonna be on the field. Um, that that would just make that room so much deeper if you could get him fully healthy and keep him that way. He's just had some terrible luck so far. Um, you got two really good freshmen. Tafoy Vegan has been getting some work with the first team in the spring. He's an early enrollee. Um, due to one of those guys, uh, I think it was Terrell that that got dinged up, had to miss a little bit of time. So Lewis, excuse me, Vegan was getting some work with the first team. Um, Corey and Gibson is still reco- recuperating from an injury, suffered during his high school season, so he's not practicing right now, but he's a guy I could see, you know, contributing as a freshman. Um, Mike Reed has shown a propensity. To, to, he's got trust in a lot of those guys. He'll throw them out there early and see what they can do, and those were two, you know, especially Gibson, two two pretty highly rated guys. I mean, Tavoy Fegan, they called him the seatbelt down there in Florida during his high school career because he was so good um, locking down guys. But I think Clips is going to have a pretty deep group of, of corners, maybe not a ton of veteran experience because Terrell and Lewis are both only going to be sophomores. Lucas going into his third season but hadn't played a ton. And then those two freshmen. And, and then you got some – some other guys on there like um, Miles Oliver and who's also been hurt his um, 
first couple of seasons there. And Rob Billings is maybe another guy, another freshman coming in that doesn't get here to the summer is Ashton Hampton. Um, and Brendan Strozier, Brendan Strozier, not Rob Billings. Billings is a safety. Um, th those are some guys that maybe could work their way into the rotation at some point. But I think you're looking at Terrell, Lewis, and Lucas as your top three guys, and then maybe those freshmen working their way in there. Jason, you mentioned safety. R.J. Mickens, he's back. And uh, also Tyler Venables. How's that rotation look at this point? Yeah, you get Tyler Venables back after he missed all of last season. And you also got back Khalil Barnes, who was one of the breakout players last year as a freshman. He, he's going to be one of the anchors on that back end. Um, Sherrod Koval is another guy that could um, see a lot of time, even though he's he's still out recuperating from an ACL tear, I think it was. Um, Kylon Griffin's another guy that got some looks last year that I could see being in that rotation. And then you got a couple of freshmen who – Looked really good in the first practice that I, I got, or the only practice I got to watch. You could tell they're they're extremely athletic, um, long. Um, Ricardo Jones and Noah Dixon, um, two guys I know they're they're really high on. You know, that Clemson's pretty deep at safety. We'll see if they can, you know, earn some opportunities this year. But is you got a little bit more depth here at safety than maybe you do at corner, especially when you look at it from an experience standpoint. So when you show up for the spring game and you put all of it together on defense, what are going to be, uh, or where are the eyes going to go first in, in terms of evaluating this in, entire unit? You know, if you're looking at the secondary as a whole, you, you want to see more of what you saw last year. Clemson made, great strides in their past defense in, in 2023. It was much improved over 2022, and that was one of the things Dabo Sweeney specifically pointed out that they needed to be better at, and they were. Um, you know, but I, I'd be – my eyes would be on those guys like Terrell and Shelton Lewis. Um, Terrell kind of proved his worth last year. He played a lot last year. Lewis didn't play quite as much. He started in the bowl game. And I think that's going to prove to be an invaluable experience as he's moved as he moves forward. Because I think that guy's got all the talent in the world. He he just needs to, you know, get out there and do it and get his hands dirty. And, and the more you play, the better he'll get. Um, and, and then you know, as safety, Mickens is kind of the quarterback of that group if you want to term it that way. And there's a lot of talent there too, man. Again, uh, you get Koval back, um, Colin Colin Griffin. Got his feet wet last year. Tyler Venables is back. Um, so so there, there's a lot to like the, the, with what Clemson's got on the back end, especially when you put it with what they were able to do last year from a past defense standpoint. All right, Clemson fans, I hate to do this to you, but most important play from 2023. I don't know if it was the blind side shot on uh, – well, it wasn't a blind side shot, but it was the, you know, the, the move off the edge – that blew up Cade Klubnick when Clemson could have possibly gone up by two scores. And obviously it went for a scoop and score all the way the other way. Or is it the Jonathan White's 29 yard miss with five minutes left to take the lead? That game, just my goodness, that just had to make everybody sick. Uh, practically made me sick and I didn't even care who won. I just thought it was a good game, but I thought Clemson outplayed them. So I thought they should have won the game. Uh, so bringing us to special teams, obviously, uh, White's had a better year than just that that uh, one kick, but uh, the field goal kicking has been better. Oh yeah, you, you've got to be better there. And, and White, to his credit, you know he he was much better to end the season as he, you know, they kind of just caught him in cold off the road. He hadn't even been there. Um, made some big kicks in that win over South Carolina. I think he was three for three in that game, and then made you know a couple big kicks against Kentucky in the bowl game. One of them was his career long, but. He, he's no longer around, so you got a freshman coming in and Robert Gunn, who, who's supposed to be really, really I – mean, excuse me, Nolan Hoosier. Robert Gunn was already there, um, who's supposed to be really, really good, one of the best kickers in the country. And, but you already had Robert Gunn as a freshman, you know, coming in as a, a freshman. He was a redshirt freshman last year, and he was supposed to be one of the – best kickers coming out of high school in his class too. You just don't ever know until those guys get out there in front of 80,000 people and try to do it. Um, 
by all accounts, Gunn was pretty good in spring and fall last year. And then once he got out there with the lights on, you know, it just he proved to be not ready. Um, so so it's going to be a battle between those guys, Hoosier and, and Gunn. Um, good report so far, though. Um, even for Gunn, I think he's been, you know, better so far this spring. But they, they, they try to put as much pressure as they can on those kickers as much as you can in practice anyway. And, and so far, Hoosier's been delivering from what I can gather. It's kind of difficult to uh, project on the special teams in regards to coverage units, return units, and all that business because a lot of coaches take uh, the approach that uh, we're going to take our best athletes, uh, very young players, and get them experience and get them on the field and not beat up the other guys. Other coaches like to sprinkle in more veterans to make sure things don't go wrong on special teams. But uh, what are your thoughts about uh, those units going into this year? You know, I think Clemson needs to be better when it comes to punt returns. You know, actually, you know, they, they they tried some different guys out last year. Tyler Brown ended up taking over that role for a little while, and then he, he fumbled a couple, and, and then they ended up putting in a, a walk-on guy who they knew was going to catch it but wasn't going to give you much in the return game. I, I think that's something they are looking to be better at this year. Um We'll we'll see who ends up winning that job, but I, I you know you could work in guys like Brown, Antonio Williams, um, maybe there, there's probably a couple more they're working in there that I'm forgetting right off the top of my head, but uh, I think that's probably gonna be something that's probably open throughout the fall, and I do think that's something they want to get better at. That's something Dabo Sweeney's specifically mentioned too, um, an area in which they needed to pr- improve in. Punt return, you know, punt coverage hasn't been bad. You you want to see more of the same. Um, kickoff cover is the same. They they gave up one in the uh, touchdown return in the in the Gator Bowl. Probably got a little complacent because they got a kicker that routinely, you know, hit, hits them in the end zone, and they're usually touchbacks. So I think they might have got a little a bit complacent, and this one didn't make it all the way to the end zone, and the guy brings it out and or it barely made it to the end zone and the guy brings it out and runs it all the way back. But, you know, the Clemson's re- coverage teams have been solid for the most part, you know, last year, year before last. So you want more of the same there. But you want to be better when it comes to, you know, return yardage, you know, particularly when it comes to the punt game. Jason Priester breaking it down for us. Offense and defense, check out all the videos. And, of course, uh, football, baseball, basketball coverage there at allclemsontigers.com. Jason, we appreciate you stopping by, sir. Yes, sir. My pleasure. Appreciate it, Mark.